The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. This is the Thursday edition, June the 26th. My, my, how time flies. Um, so, let's see, Mike distorted. Let me just do a little quick uh, change here. So, as far as we're concerned, in terms of the, I just need to check something out. Give me one second. I like to get all the technical stuff done. Uh, so let me get that. Sounds, it's, uh, what are your settings? Uh, that looks good. Oh, okay. I think we're okay. So here we go. The uh, Dow right now is down 66. It had been down over 100 points. The S&P had been down over 12, and now it's down only 7. Um, I want to talk about the buying activity and the selling activity and how certain sectors are beginning to look vulnerable and what we should look at in terms of the projection into early next week. <clears throat> so here we go. First of all, I'd like to say thank you, Steve, for two great hours. We have programming right through the day today until 6 o'clock. Please stay tuned. Just uh, great shows coming up one after the other. We're looking at the Dow futures, this is the um, E-mini S&P futures in the daily chart having made a peak F slash A in the Chapman wave. What does that mean? So let me just do something really quickly because we always have new um, subscribers and new uh, listeners and new uh, 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 tigers. So let me do this. In the Chapman Wave methodology, I have a CD called Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology, and it is a CD that has a CD book that has 476 slides, about 27 or something chapters, plus a huge 12, 10 or 12-page glossary. And in the process, all I do is I make it as simple as possible. Look for the left side low bar. If you go to the chart pattern um, of, of, any, of any price movement that you're looking at, and you identify the lowest left side low bar <clears throat> that makes a little V-shaped bottom. In other words, it makes a little trough. I call them troughs on the downside, peaks on the upside. And it's the most obvious one on the left. This is an easy way to do it. It becomes a little bit more complex later on, but the easy way is just to do that. Then what you want to do is you want to follow the most basic thing. You go from that low bar and you immediately counting each successively higher peak. If there's a pullback to make a peak, there isn't a peak until it's made, that peak can last just one session or it can last a whole bunch of sessions. But when it, if it doesn't break the low bar but instead goes to a higher high, recovery high that is, starting a new leg up, that leg becomes a floating ladder. So the first one will be A and then it becomes a peak A. Then the moment it goes one penny above peak A, Let's call it 20. And the moment it goes to 20.01 or 20,000.001, whatever it is, one, one, one fraction above, starts the new leg up. And that leg stays until it becomes a peak. Now, look at this. This is on slide 234. This is just a quick review, counting the peaks. And here's the question. What was it? And you count it, and you'll see that it went to peak A, B, C, D. And in this case, it went to an E and an F. Usually we look at D as really the, the prerequisite of any Chapman Wave buy signal to buy mode. It says you should go to at least a D. So I want you to give a little preface um, on, on the Chapman Wave just as an illustration, a visual illustration and technical illustration of what I'm looking at. Well, if you're looking at the E minis, it went to a peak E, and then it went in a pattern that I call the falling axe. Let me just go to that. Uh, the falling axe will be... Uh, Chapter 24, I believe. So let me just check that out. Chapter 24, right there. And what does it say? It tells you that if there's a pattern that looks like a long handle, sloping handle, with a declining cone formation or uh, uh, expanding wedge formation, when it breaks out above it, it could give you a one-to-one -one expansion of that particular pattern. Just a really simple way of using Two trend lines. Actually, there are three, but if you know that, that, that X formation, you only have to draw in the uh, expanding 
declining wedge. And now look what happens. You go from that, if you're looking at Tiger TV, to this was GoPro. Oh, I, I should have done that right, right at the beginning. In the chapter, if you saw my uh, slides right here, there's, a, there's something in Chapter 25 called the Phantom Peak. It's a particular technique within the Chapman Wave. In the one-minute chart, I'd use a Phantom Peak here um, in GoPro, which has just come public. It went public about uh, at 10.51. That's just um, 15 minutes or so ago. And it went from an open of 28.65. Usually the round number openings, but there wasn't a round number. It was such excitement to get in. 28.65, that was the low, and it went to 29.50, and then it pulled back. But if you look at what I did, I had done this earlier. In fact, before we came on, I was showing this, that we have gone from a low bar, the most identifiable low bar, and it went peak A, pulled back in the one-minute chart, went to a flat base, uh, uh, sorry, a flat top, in, um, phantom peak at 30.58, uh, sorry, 31 round number, two bars. It actually went three bars and the fourth bar broke out. I called that a phantom peak. Then it went to another phantom peak right there at 31.66.68. I called that a phantom peak as a one-minute chart. Then it went to a D and I put a plus sign, and that was the D. And what did I say? In the chat, wait, this is live right now. This is the this is the degree of... of, of um, of uh, veracity that this particular technique has. It goes to the D, even though I'm using a particular variation of the Chapman Wave methodology. And what happens from the high bar of 33 round number high? I love these round numbers. There's our round number that we were looking for. Round number high, it pulls back, and it pulls back all the way to 3104. Hey, 33 to where it's trading now, 3108, that is a huge move using this particular technique. If you use a two-minute chart, you still have this only as leg A to the upside. That's why the techniques of the Chapman Wave methodology, the refinements are so important. When I teach my Master Trader series, that's where we get into those nitty-gritties that I can't actually discuss here too often because, it, you know, it's so visual, it's so live, it's... It, it's a little difficult to do when, in fact, what, what my function here is to be looking at the markets and discussing particular stocks that you're looking at. So the ESU has gone to a potential peak F, or it's a brand new leg A, and that, um, a, sorry, peak A, in a new buy signal to buy mode, that would be extraordinary. I just don't think that's going to happen. So right now, if you're looking at the 120-minute chart, putting the same techniques into use, there's another peak A, B, C, D to the top. There's another pattern that I call Chapman Wave Stalk Leg Formation. goes from the leg to the body to the neck to the head to the beak. has a rogue wave. Uh, what is a rogue wave? In the Chapman Wave methodology, a rogue wave, uh, let me just check. That's in Chapter 11A. Chapter 11A. Let's get to Chapter 11A. Chapter 11. So let's find out what happens here. Where is 11A? Hey, come on, mister. There it is. An introduction to the rogue wave. The rogue wave says you're going down and it's kind of a bear market and there's a sudden single leg spike up that goes to a new high and that very bar pulls back, gets all the, the shorts to cover, gets the bulls to say, I'm going back in. I made a big mistake to get out. And that's the bar that takes it all the way down. That's exactly what we saw here in the 120-minute chart with that big spike on the uh, at, at noon on the 24th of June and then pulls back from 9060 round number high all the way that's an all-time high down to the low that was made at 1937.35 yesterday and today uh, you've got a new low of 1936.25 so that couldn't be 35 that must have been 25 so there's that arch formation there's the technique see that channel that I already drew in yesterday way early um, and look how it, it maintained the parameters of the channel now it's in that mid channel line so i just wanted to go through some of these things to discuss the methodology why if there are new uh, listeners at least to the uh, chapman wave methodology now let's go to some other nitty gritties here the dow so this is what i said to subscribers to my opening call this morning the reason why we've been short for quite a few days now um is because the 120-minute chart made a peak F top at 16,978. The um, trough, trough C at 10.43 in the um, 
in the VIX index, 120 minute chart said it should go to D today. It's added D, and that's this where this is where you could get a bit of a bounce in the market as peak D pulls back a little bit. But if by the end of the day, the high of today, which is at 12.51, if that is taken out, then we have established quite clearly that in the, and the, and the Dow closes anywhere around here underneath uh, 16,810, it's at 16,789. I would suggest to you that we've gone from a, a, um, a sell signal back to a sell mode in the daily chart. Not yet the weekly charts, but at least in the, day, the daily chart of the Dow. That's very important to me. Weekly chart, I... Uh, sorry, the, the S&P has to close below today's low of 1944, and then it'll go from a sell signal. Mm, no, I need to see what it does before I can say it goes to a sell mode. Now, a couple of things. This is what I show my subscribers every day, that there was actually a peak D in the daily chart at 69.78, and now we're going to the up-channel support area. So this entire area between 16,680 higher, is going to be the support area. Close below that says, whoops, first time you're closing below this up channel. That's not good. The stochastic's bad. The MACD's not very good. So I'm watching this and I believe that we've got the makings here of at least a consolidation. Now I want to go through a bunch of charts that I had questions about and also what I wanted to discuss. So let me do this. Let me just put this right here so that I can see it. Um, first of all, there was a question from the, the close um, just before the end of the day yesterday about ISR, which is ISO Ray Inc. Brachiotherapy Treatments. It's gone to a peak D in the monthly chart. It's trading at 2.96, down 3 cents. Made a peak D in the daily. It's got a peak in. I suggested that this particular pattern, um, and I never spoke about it in this chart, but I, it was a pattern that came up in many charts, has the potential to work its way towards back up in the rectangle formation. And that rectangle formation says, if this stock is able to close, it's 296. If it's able to close about 310 in the next two, three days, there's a chance it could walk all the way towards the high that was made the recent hour of 326. If, in fact, it takes out yesterday's low of 283, be very careful. It's stuck in a trading range. I would not be long. I'd probably be just waiting for the next sign of strength. So that's that. Um, I also want to, I spoke about the IYT, and I said to subscribers this morning, I'm a little cautious about the uh, transportation index. Why? Because it's making a peak D, um, possible peak D. It has already made a peak D in the weekly chart. And if by Friday afternoon, if there's a close anywhere below the 144 area, today pull back very sharply, pull back to 144.85, but it's actually rebounded. It's at 145.64. So give it a day or two. But if it's by Monday, if it's already below 144, that's going to be negative. If it's holding nicely here, then this pattern in the Chapman methodology. Let me go to another slide. The slide that discusses the um, we used to call it the dreaded H, but actually I just call it the lowercase H pattern. Right uh, uh, for, for quite a long time now. I don't have any any inferences. This is the pattern as we go out the break. You see what happens? It makes the scallop to the downside, and then it makes a larger edge, and then it can go to an M pattern. That's what we're seeing as a potential. And I'll be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software where that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, and indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. Dow's on 83. S&P's down 9. And this is going to be a fascinating period because this is where there was the greatest amount of disbelief. And you can see the buyers keep coming in. Also, we've got the rotational market. So there are some stocks, for instance, we are long some positions which are still doing pretty nicely. Um, this is going to be where the bifurcation and the rotational aspect is going to be so important because it's going to tell us what's working and what's not working. And the uh, one thing that made me a little bit nervous, one of the reasons why I wanted to go to the short side, more to the short side, is because my Dow Quartet, GE, IBM, Triple M, and uh, UTX did not act very well at all. Now, just real quickly before we go to our callers, um, before we go to our callers, I wanted to just say that uh, the question in the den about the Euro USD, this is the, uh, what was that, the Euro? No, you want the USD JPY, USD JPY. Let me just do this because I think we might run out of time today. He's acting very poorly. Um, this is the dollar Japanese yen. Let me just double check if that was a question. Um, question, question, question. I believe that was a question. I'll follow it up in a few minutes, but uh, on the yen. So, yeah, this is the USD JPY, and it's saying that um, the rally that has just been has made a, a staple, like an inverted head and shoulders pattern. Oh, no, head and shoulders pattern. I'm watching this real closely. It looks to me at 101.54, that 101.08, the 200 period moving average, will be tested real soon. Not a good pattern, and it went towards the 200 period exponential moving average. It's kind of struggling. So the monthly chart. Let's wait until the month finishes. Got a couple of days to go. But the weekly chart is not good. If it goes into the middle of 101.19, that the, the wick of that candle, 
of the week of the 23rd of May, there's a good chance it'll test the low. If it tests the low of 100.816, it's going to test the low of February the 7th, the week of the 7th at 100.749. It needs very quickly to bounce over 102. That'll be a big, make a big difference. I'm going to go to Nahid in Safety Harbor, Florida. Nahid, how are you? Very good, thank you. How are you, Basil? I'm very good, thank you. Would you please look at uh, Disney, please? Okay, this is a great time to be looking at Disney because we've got the summer months, and this, of course, should be Disney's biggest time in terms of their uh, not just the not the um, the entertainment side, um, but in in terms of their uh, outdoor activity side. Let's call it. And I'm looking at this. I've spent quite a lot of time on the chart of Disney, and my conclusion was that if Disney starts to break down. In this time frame, it's going to tell us more about the economy than any of the economists or any other statistics can tell us. That's just my opinion. And the reason I say that is because historically, this is usually pretty good, a pretty good time for uh, Disney. Um, at the same time, in the charts, I hadn't updated it, but up until recently when I was doing my Chapman Wave notation, on the 120-minute chart, I was looking at the previous peak E that was in Disney trading now at 84.17 up 29 cents on a day when the general market's down. That's a good sign. But on the day that it went to 84.16 at 11.30 in the morning, Eastern Time on the 20th, that was a peak E and a pullback right to the 200-period moving average. That completed a move in the Chapman Wave um, buy mode to a D. Now what we've got is I wanted to see what would happen. I didn't see over the last two days. There was a, a new recovery high, and we have just gone to another D in the 120-minute chart, and the technicals in the 120-minute um, chart, let me just see, are actually quite good with a stochastic at 84%. So on a very near-term basis, that's good. But my biggest question is when you've got a stock that's walking the nine-period moving average in the longer term, since Disney back in 2012, when was that, January? January of 2012 went to 30, uh, 37, 94 low and then went to 40.25 above the nine period moving average for the very first time in a while. That said, the nine period exponential moving average, which looking back now or looking forward from that day but looking back from today, has only a, twice touched, three times touched the nine period moving average but not once has it closed even near that level every other time it's been like a propellant now what we're getting in the candle is a peak a possible leg e with a doji candle if it continues like this into monday monday i believe is the last day of the month and uh yep yeah, parks and resorts thank you uh alan my my, my engineer can remind me that's exactly the other area of the entertainment side um so Walt Disney, um, looking at it on a monthly basis, has got a stochastic at 91%, and the MACD is very good. So looking out, I don't see anything yet in the monthly. I want to talk about the weekly and the daily because it really pertains to a chunk of what we're looking at right now. So I'm going to ask you when we get back what your position is, and I'm also going to tell you that right at this moment it's acting quite well, and I'll be right back with Nahid in Safety Harbor. The Dow is down 86. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. Now, I'm showing the chart of Disney, which is up 18 cents at 84.09. Basically having a lot of struggle to try to get out of the 80, 85s and into the 86s. It's, it's been there a number of times, 83.65 peak D. It pulls back, makes a cup formation, breaks out and goes to a peak F. The F is where you've got to be real careful, especially in a rising wedge formation. But a rising wedge formation almost always produces a cup formation, and that cup on the right side is where the real test of strength goes, because if that cup fails and you get a divergence between weak technicals and uh, where it is now and where it was before at the previous high, that's where you've got to be most careful. So all I can say is that as far as Disney, let, let me put it this way. If I, now here, if I was asked, I like to look at stocks and say, forget about the question. Just answer this. Right here, would I be buying it or would I be selling it? And if I look at Disney on a, on a daily basis, I would have to say it's holding really well. It's broken above the left side arch formation. It's in leg B. I would probably say, you know, I'm prepared to nibble at. I would start a position at 84.11, not ideal. It would have been better just as it broke the nine period moving average at about 83.50. But I would put a tight stop on this of maybe one point. I think that's fairly tight for an $84 stock. Reason being, at 83.13, I think it starts to break down and head towards the lower the lower level at the 82 to 81.50 uh, area. More importantly is that the weekly chart is walking the nine period moving average. There's a real good chance that this is not leg B. 
a peak B that is made, but a peak F based on the weakening technicals. But price is the determinant of trend. And this candle right here says, hey, I don't care about all your technicals. I'm walking the nine period moving average. If I close under 82.50, you can start worrying. But right now, I'm acting pretty well on a weekly basis. So that's my, that's my question. My, that's my answer to anyone who says, what would you do right now on any particular stock? In this case, for, for, for Disney, I'd probably say even based on the 120-minute chart, um, even though it's peak D, I would still do a little nibbling here, but I'd have a fairly tight stop. And if it starts to fail, I wouldn't even hesitate to short if certain conditions are met, and that is that the MACD deflex lower and stochastic starts to go underneath 30%. Whoa, now I'm going to ask you, what's your position? <laughs> well, I purchased it around 82, and I wasn't sure if I, because I, I thought it's going to, I wasn't sure if it's going to leg F or not, so I wasn't sure if I should keep it. I, so that's why I called you. <laughs> So now this is so this is the the best thing you know you're in in a nice position because the market is weak and you're up about one and a half points. Uh, right. I'm just going to suggest that that exactly the analysis I gave you. I'm looking out many times. It's gone to a peak D, folks. If you ever want to learn about the Chapman wave technique, go to a 120 minute chart. I I can guarantee you you will find at least a dozen 120 minute charts that give you a whole chunk of rallies that went to D and then failed. Somehow th th these work beautifully, especially in the 120-minute um, chart. And here we are once again. We're at in leg D. So if this one holds 83.76 is the nine-period moving average, if by the end of the day this is holding well, this is one of those stocks. I mean, the same as the stocks that I have in our portfolio for my opening call subscribers. We've got these positions and the long positions. They're holding pretty well. One is just down a penny and the other is um, down nine cents, holding very nicely above our buy point. And that's the only way I can do it. I would do the same. I think you're in the right position. If the market rallies at all, uh, Disney, by the end of the day, if the Dow's down 70, S&P's down 7.5, come back very nicely from the lows. If, in fact, buying returns, the Dow closes down only 42 points, maybe 38 points. S&P closes down just 4.5 points. Disney should be up about 45 to 50 cents, and if it takes out the high of the day today, you're in a great position. I like your position, and I'm just going to say to you, let the market tell you you, you, you got in correctly, and let it take you out based on, on, a, on a stop position because okay. it's acting okay. quite well right now. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Basil. Uh, My it was pleasure. It a pleasure talking to you as always. Thank you very much for calling tonight. Always good to hear from you. So, folks, we're looking at Disney, and uh, that's my analysis there. And that is what I call a typical example in the bifurcation of the markets as we see them right now. You've got the um, the autos were rallying very nicely when the market was showing weakness. And I, I just have to tell you that uh, this is a situation where um, I'm I'm inclined to say be specific in your positions make your stops and buy stops very, very tight, and if you take it out, you take it out. But don't be afraid to go short. Don't be afraid to hold longs, because if they, each one is working in this kind of market, it's a real good sign. So, yeah, I wanted to go through a bunch of things. I wanted to spend a little time going straight to, I'm going to skip a couple of steps. I want to go to bonds. I had said to subscribers this morning, in fact, yesterday I was thinking that I'd like to go long the bonds, but there was a gap up, and I really didn't feel like chasing it because I'm thinking of stock at 112, uh, 112.60 going to 116. Yeah, that's a nice percentage gain, but I'd rather be using that money for other things. Um, but look what's happened. The TLT, the iShares 20-year Treasury bond fund, you remember I was speaking about it yesterday. So the 120 minute now is broken away from the 200 period moving average with very good technicals, and it's in leg E. It might have, it might be recycling, but I'm treating it as an E. And if it holds very well, then indeed it could recycle to the upside. The TLT, on the other hand, failed. It went underneath the up channel, and now what it's doing is it's gone back into the up channel after going down to 110. Point seventy four. So what we've got here is, and this has to be because a new low was made, <clears throat> this has to be leg A. 
And I'm going to keep calling it leg A because it never broke below the, the initial leg A starting point for the buy mode, the last buy mode in the daily from 109.61. So this is going to be called leg A, but if it breaks above 115.19, goes to 115.20, I'll call it E slash A if it's in this leg or nothing. If it's another leg up, I'll call it say F slash whatever it is. So, th so now we're looking at this. I like it. I like it on the daily chart, but a lot of work needs to be done because stochastics is 73%. MACD cross positive again, but if it starts to fail from here and deflect lower, then under 112.20, 12, I'd say, whoa, be a little careful. But there's a pattern we were just looking at in Disney, walking the nine-period moving average, acting well. The MACD fast moving average is deflecting back up again in the W formation. The monthly chart is going to be fantastic for it crosses. If it makes a new high by Monday, above 115.19, I don't know if it can do that. If it does that, that's just extended leg A. But if it pulls, if it doesn't do that, but on Tuesday, the new month, it actually goes to a new recovery high. That would be leg B in the monthly and a breakout of this long-term downtrend line from 2012. So that's the, T, the, the, the iShares Lehman 20 at Treasury Bond Trust. Now look at this. This is what I showed my subscribers today. Do you think I can, I'm going to be able to find it? Oh, man. Let me see if I can just find it. Give me one second. It is, oh, of course, that was easy. It is the bond fund, BD, BND. Look at this. Same situation. You've got leg C up in the daily. It's at 82.90. BND is the symbol. The Vanguard Total Bond Market ETF. This says to me that there is a good chance in this rotational aspect of the market that what we're looking at, just a quickly want to check emails to see if there's anything, uh, any questions now, um, to see that whether it's the same situation as the TLT. A break, it's, it's filling in the gap, and the gap low is from 82.30. The high today is 82.20. It's got 11 cents to go to fill the gap. Usually when you fill the gap, there's a little digestive moment, and then we'll see what happens. But what will happen is if 82.43 is hit, then that 82.60 where I've got a peak F, that could be an instant restart, a Chapman Wave instant restart recycle. Remember... It's like anything else that you do. You don't do everything exactly the same way when you're cooking or whatever it is. You learn some of the techniques and you apply them the next time. So the original whatever you did becomes a little bit more, I don't want to use the word sophisticated because it sounds too sophisticated. It becomes evolutionarily a little bit um, more articulated so that you've got a slight variation. There's a, you've learned that you can do something a little different. Now look at this. I'm going to use this bond fund. This is the total bond market ETF to say that the monthly chart is improving tremendously. It's walking the nine period moving. Any move in the next month under 81 says, whoops, got a problem. But at this point, it's acting very well. And it seems to me there's a chance that money could flow out of stocks into the so-called safety of bonds, even though every single show I hear says um, bonds, I've been hearing it for a year and a half, bonds, you're going to get killed in bonds. Last year, anybody who had bonds would have been killed, and um, uh, that didn't happen. That just did not happen. Now, this year, maybe it will happen, but so far, it's saying that bonds are acting very well. Now, look at the junk bonds. Junk bonds have just gone as a brand new buy mode has gone to an A, it's gone to a B. Remember, our objective always in the chat wave is to get to a D. How often it works is just incredible. Look, it's already worked once there. Let's see if it's going to work again. D, uh, C, and lo and behold, we've gotten to a D holding nicely above the nine period moving average. MACD is just turning down, but hasn't turned negative. And look at this stochastics at 92%. This is the junk bond fund. And it's in leg D in the weekly chart. Let's put that in. And I must save this because I don't want to lose it. Save. And I'll save it again just to make absolutely sure. And it's in leg D in the monthly chart going right up against the 200 period moving average where you would expect historically to find some resistance. So how the junk bonds traveling, J and K, uh, uh, traveling along here at 41.72 down 04 can or if 
it gets to the 4230 area, that'll be fantastic. If it fails from here, got to watch it real closely. Now I want to show you a chart that most of you have never seen before if you, if you don't know my work. This is the triple yield weekly chart. It's got the white is the 30-year, the gold is the 10-year note, the, the cyan is the 5-year note. Now, what's happened is the 30-year yield went to a peak A and then a peak B. Let me just put that in here. I didn't update that. And that's a B. And I'm going to make that yeah, white so that it matches. Here we go, white. So, white. Didn't I just say white? There it is. And there it is. If, in fact, there's a little... You remember the pattern that I was looking at before? I wonder if this is the one here. Yeah. Remember the arches, the scallops that become... They, they, they close under the left side low bar, and then they become a rather large lowercase m formation. It's from the lowercase h. It goes to an m continuous pattern. Well... Look what's happened here. You've got your H. Will this become a continuous pattern as bond yields stay between 3.5 and a half, let's call it, and the low that was made of 33? Or is it going to break under 33 or above 34.99? Why would that be 34.99? A, a, a close above in the three, 35, 3.5 area actually is a breakout. If it's, say, next week, it starts leg C, a very quick A to B to C. Every other week, it's going higher. So this is a very important period. But the tenure is saying, hey, I, I, it looks to me like I want to test the low that was made at 2.4.02. That's the, But it's at 25.21 right now. This is a very important period. Not only that, this is the closest that the yields have been in, um, in the distance between each one in quite a while. So that, that is narrowing. This is going to be a very important period. Something else I wanted to talk about in terms of the bonds. Let me see. I wrote it down here. It says the BND, the J and K. Oh, and I wanted to just show you um, this is the, the bonds itself. This is the continuous contract, US. Now, I know some of you don't like continuous contracts. I say, hey, toughies. That's what I use. So bond contract has to break above 140 and right now it's at 137 and 830 seconds. This is continuous. How close is it? Well, bonds are at 137.04. It's really close. So I don't see any problem with using a continuous contract here for my purpose of higher highs and higher lows. There's the cup formation. This cup formation says be a little careful because sometimes when you get back or just above the previous high, in this case 138 and 1030 seconds, if it fails and it's in leg D, that could be a problem. So that's what I'd be looking for. That would say, uh-uh, we're just getting a short-term breather here where the market is pulling back. Um, but, it's, I mean, let's face it, the, the S&P is down 7. Yesterday it was up 10 or 11 points. And the, the Dow, because of Boeing, was much weaker. So we can't decide, decipher right now. Um, we can't extrapolate the information and just project it out onto weekly and monthly charts. So, uh, out in the dense is the flattening of the yield curve from 5 to 30 years could mean that the next big move down in rates will be concentrated more in the 2 to 10-year point of the curve with a much lesser move in the 30-year point. I think you could be right. I think you're onto something here. I'm watching this really closely because there was very little movement in the 5 and 10, much more in the 30. How that resolves itself, because it's always the 30-year that has been making the bigger moves, as you can see from this particular chart pattern. So those are the charts I want you to look at. I'll be right back with Chris Orlando, and I'll be back looking at uh, down 72, S&P's down 7.5. Back to Don't forget to check out my opening call, my business service. Don't forget Larry Passavento coming up after me. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary perspective. 
prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability. Available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And what we're looking at here, give me one second. Let me finish this chart. Is that the Dow is down 70. S&P is down 7.5. Very interesting market, this. And we're going to go to Rich in Orlando. Rich, how are you? Good, Basil. And yourself? I'm well, thank you. Good. We spoke a couple of days ago about Vail, and we were yes, talking v about that it needed to get to 1341. Yes. It kind of pulled back a little bit, and it's kind of working its way up there. I don't know. It's, it looks like the volume is pretty decent today. Just kind of calling to get your opinion of any changes and thoughts on it. So the story was uh, Richard called. We were looking together at Vail. Vail is uh, one of those uh, agricultural stocks, and I'm looking at this here. I just want to finish doing that. Basic metals. Basic metals. Mostly. Uh, sorry, basic metals. I always think it's, uh, it's uh, basic okay. metals. Of course, it's basic metals. And what I said, it's the start. The first time I can see it starting a move 
that has a little bit better technicals than it had before. It was a nice positive divergence between the stochastic and MACD and the price pulling back, but the technicals rallying as a positive divergence. Number, number one. Number two is that I said it really needed to close above or push above 1341. 1341 is, in fact, the high of the 11th of June. I'm going to make the suggestion. You're in the stock. I'm right. going to suggest that you hold the stock. I think it's, today was very important. The fact that it's gapped up and hasn't given it back like many stocks have gapped up and given it back. Yours is at the high of the day. I like it. I think that the 120-minute chart is in leg. Uh, I had this notated A, B, C. I think that it's got a left side, right side price time match. Now, it's a little bit extended, but that th um, 30, yeah, I think it's going to make 1341 and it should make it by tomorrow. Um, I like it. I think it's doing well. I just get a little nervous if it broke under $13.15 to $13 today after being so good at the end of the day. So right now, I like it. I think you should hold it. And I would just, let's leave it and I, let's look at it again in maybe two days' time, maybe Monday. Let's see how it's acted over Friday through Thursday, Friday into Monday morning. Because I like it, and I think it should go to D, and my target would be 1346 to 30, uh, 1387 if it closes, where, it closes where it is now or higher by the end of the day. Great. Listen, thanks so very much, Basil. Have a nice day. My pleasure. Congratulations on a nice-looking stock there. Well, it wasn't before, but it is now. So thank you, Rich. Now, let's just do this. I'm going to make, uh, make it real simple. We've got Larry Pesavento coming up. He's going to go into much greater details. I just want you to do a couple of things here. Let me just jump around. I want you to go to NG, which is natural gas. Natural gas is pulling back off to a PD. Remember, we're talking about those Ds in the Chapman wave, D or an E, the fourth of the fifth highest peak. Look, the last E pulled back sharply, made an arch formation. This one's making the second arch formation. This is now an in, an, a lowercase m formation, or you can call it an m formation. If, in fact, um, natural gas is a continuous contract, breaks under the low of the 22nd of May, in my case it's 4.370, it will test that Roman candle, very positive Roman candle, but it will become negative if it, if it goes into into the 4.35 area on the continuous contract because it should test the low. What has to happen is natural gas needs to at least make the, the H to M pattern by bouncing by tomorrow or Monday into the 4.64 area. That's going to be real tough to do because the, the, the weekly shows the 200 period moving average, strong resistance, and there's that M pattern. So that's I, just, I don't have time now to go through some of the other commodities. Uh, gold, I just want to say gold made at peak Look, the GLD made a peak uh, in, the, in the weekly chart. There's that. I drew it a long time ago, the H to an M pattern right there. That's what it's conforming to. And the daily has gone to a leg D, and now it could be a peak D. The 200-period moving average at 126.46 going to be really important with 125.57 to 124.78 as really important support. Folks, make it easy. The Dow close is very weak on the end of the day, and the fixed index goes to um, goes to 12.63. That's going to be the first sign that maybe now we've got some follow through to the downside in the market. But a, a fairly narrow close. We say, hey, you're stuck in the street. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits and the Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This is TF.
en en 